Hello friends, this video on morphology of flowering plants part 22 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Right? So let us concentrate on the structure of the stamen and the carpel. So let us look at the structure of a stamen in detail now. So as I mentioned, this is how the stamen looks like when you look it from the back side, when you look it from its facial side and when you look at the cross section of it. Now basically a stamen consists of three parts that is filament, anther and connective. So let us see what is that. This is filament, this is anther and this pink colored structure is the connective. So these are the three parts of a stamen. So what is filament? Filament is nothing but the stalk which bears the anthers and the filament will actually consist of the anther. So this filament or the stalk bears the anthers at its top. Talking about anther, it is a two-lobed or bi-lobed structure at the tip of the filament. So if you look at this one, you can see the two lobes of the anther, the yellow colored structure is the anther. And what is connective? Connective is a tissue kind of a structure which actually connects or which actually supports the two lobes of the anther. So because that is why it got the name connective because it connects the lobes of the anther. So it is attached at the back side of the anther. Right? Now if you look at the cross section of the anther very closely, you can actually see that each lobe of the anther has two chambers. Now each lobe, here you can see two lobes, right? And each of these lobes is this one. So each lobe has two chambers. So total we have four chambers, right? So each of these four chambers are known as pollen sacs. So pollen sacs are the chambers which are present inside the anther. So what do we see? We see that one anther has four pollen sacs. Right? And each pollen sac is filled with pollen grains and these pollen grains are the male gametes. So inside this you have the pollen grains and pollen grains are the male gametes. Clear? So this is all about the structure of stamen. So let us now quickly discuss whatever we, I mean, whatever I explained so far. The first part is filament, next is anther and the third is connective. So filament is the stalk that bears the anthers. Anther is the bilobed or two lobed structure present at the tip of the filament. Each lobe has two pollen sacs, which you can see clearly in this picture. There are two lobes and each lobe has two pollen sacs. So there are a total of four pollen sacs. And each pollen sac contains pollen grains and pollen grains are the male gametes or male sex cells. The third part of stamen is connective. It is the part attached to the back of the anther and it provides a kind of support to the lobes of the anther. So these are the three parts which together constitute the stamen or the main reproductive part of a flower. So now there are many different ways in which stamens can be arranged. I mean as I said what are stamens? Stamens are, if you look at the flower as a whole, stamens are nothing but long stick like structures with swollen heads. That is how stamens look like. But these stamens can be arranged in a many different number of ways. So based upon those different ways in which stamens are arranged, some terminologies have been introduced so that we can actually distinguish which flower or which, which flower has what type of stamen arrangement. So let us discuss about the different arrangement of stamens. The first one is apipetalus. So apipetalus means stamens attached to the petals. So you understand the petals that is the colored structures and the stamens they will be attached to each other. Example is 
flowers like sunflower and datura. So here you can see sunflower. In sunflower, if you look at the center of the sunflower, you can actually see these kind of stamens like this. And these stamens are attached to the petals. These are the petals. So with these petals, they are attached. Similarly, if you look at this flower, these are the petals, the white colored, they have white colored petals and the stamens, here you can see the protruding structures or the thin structures, they are stamens, so they are also attached to the petals. They are called epipetalus. Petalus is from petals, epipetalus means attached to petals. So it would be actually something like this. If this is a petal, so the stamens would be somewhat like this. So the petals, it, they will be attached to the petals. The next one is epiphyllus. So here instead of petalus, you have phyllus. So this means stamens attached to perianth. What is perianth? First of all, let's understand that. Perianth is nothing but calyx plus corolla. So calyx and corolla together is given a term called perianth. That means the sepals and the petals are together known as perianth. So now in flowers where the stamens are attached not only to petals but also to the sepals. So stamens, petals and sepals they are all attached to each other. So that is known as epiphyllus. So some examples where we see this is lily. So here you can see the stamens, the petals and the sepals. So here again if you see, you do not see the sepals very separately because they are all attached to each other. So that is known as epiphyllus. The third type is gynandrous. Now see from the name itself you can make some guesses. Gyne gy is derived from gynosium and andrus is derived from androsium. So it has something to do with gynosium and androsium. So stepen, stamens attached to carpels. So gynosium is nothing but they are made up of carpels and androsium are the stamens. So stamens and carpels are attached. So that is known as gynandrus. So example would be calotropis. So this is how a calotropis flower looks like. So here if you see, if you look at the center, the exact center, there you have the gynosium or the carpel and here you have the stamens and if you look at this picture very closely, you actually see that they are all attached to each other. So the stamens and the carpels are attached to each other. That is why they have a gynandrous arrangement. The next type is polystemonus. That is, stamens are free. Wherever you have this word poly, that would mean many, many individual stamens. So, stamens are free. They are not attached to anything. They are neither attached to calyx, nor corolla, nor carpel. So, they are not attached to anything. So, they are polystemonous. So, an example of polystemonous, you can see here. See, here you can see the stamens, right? And they are not connected to anything. They are, see, the petals are all free. The sepals are all free here and the gynosium is again separate. So the stamens are free in this case. Next is monoadelphus. Mono, what does mono mean? Mono means one. And what is the meaning of adelphus? So here again, So this Adelphus, from this starting of Adelphus, you can think of the anthers. So these Adelphus denotes for the anthers. So here what happens is, all filaments of stamens are united in one bundle. So that means mono means one. So there will be one bundle of all the filaments. That means even though there will be many filaments, but all the filaments will be united in one bundle. So it would be somewhat like this. Let us suppose this is one filament. Again, this is one filament. Again, this is one filament. This is one filament. So this way you have so many filaments. 
So all these filaments are in one bundle. So you have many different filaments, but they are all in one bundle. However, the anther are free. So in this case, two important points to note, anther is free, but the filaments are united in one bundle. So that means these filaments are united together, but the anthers are free. So that is their top head portion. They are all free, but the uh, stalk-like structure, they are united. So this is seen in case of hibiscus or china rose. So this is how it looks like. Here, you will actually have the heads or the your anthers as free, but the filaments will be in one bundle. So all the filaments will be united together. So that is monoadelphus. Next type is diadelphus. So this is very easy to understand now. Di means two. And adelphus would again mean the same thing. That is the anthers are free. So here all the filaments of stamens would be united in two bundles because di means two. So in this case, Again, the anthers are going to be three, but the bundles, instead of one bundle of all the filaments, now you will have two bundles. So, example would be the legumes like pea or beans. So, here this is how it will look like. Let us suppose you have several filaments like this. All these filaments will have their free heads, that is the free anthers. These filaments will be in one, one bunch, whereas some filament will be in another bunch. So you basically have two different bunch. This is bunch one, this is bunch two. So you have two bundles of filaments. So this is known as diadelphus. And these two groups, these two bunches might not be equal. Maybe the first bunch has uh, 10 filaments, whereas the second bunch has only one filament. That is very much possible. So it is not necessary that both the bundles should have the same number of filaments. The next type is polyadelphus. Poly means many. So here again, there will be many filaments. Now the filaments will be united in many bundles. So all filaments of stamens are united in many bundles. So in this case, it, the examples would be of citrus. So citrus in citrus plants, if you, plant, if you look at the flower of a citrus plant, you can actually observe this polyadelphus arrangement of the stamens. So how would this look like? It would be somewhat like this. Let us, now all these stamens, let us suppose you have several stamens here forming one bundle. Again, some stamens forming one more bundle. Again, some stamens forming another bundle. And the anthers are still free. So even now the anthers are free. So now you have multiple bundles. So all the filaments are united but they are all in different different bundles. So that is known as polyadelphus. So these are some of the different types of arrangement of stamens in different flowers. So with this, I think we got a, a fair idea about uh, the male reproductive organ that is stamen. So let us... Thank you. Please visit www.examfeo.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.